This is how to make a circuit board at home. This is a board we're making for the great global hackerspace challenge and uh, we've decided to prototype it using home techniques. We'll be uh, etching the board ourselves um, using a laser printer to produce the resist and, and actually etching it on the uh, kitchen counter. This is the two-sided board design we have. This is the the top side looks like this, it's the red part. There's the top side of the foil and the bottom side of the foil looks like this. The actual printing. And what I like to do first is print out on plain paper and then try some of the components if I'm not sure about whether or not things are going to fit. The top foil here, um, I've printed out both the top and bottom foil as PDFs from my other computer so I can print them out here. This is the top foil and it's as you see I printed out mirrored because I'm going to be flipping it over and exposing the top. The bottom foil however is not mirrored um, because it's going to be laminated up from the bottom. So what I've been using recently as, a, as an inexpensive substitute for expensive papers is this glossy brochure paper from HP. Just make sure you don't touch it in the surface you're going to be using because the oils from your fingers can make it hard hard to bond. This is the, the paper, a Q6611A. It's a very nice heavyweight brochure paper. So yeah, checking the components against the against reality is uh, sometimes useful, especially if you got stuff that's big. It's still still usable. If you look at the, the way I've made the artwork, I've made sure there's a border, a black border, around each of the each of the images. That black border is going to let us use the toner to actually attach the prints a little bit better to the to the board. It gives you a little bit more security. So we verified that this piece of board stock that I've got it will fit two of these. Um, I have to cut almost exactly in the middle. Um, it looks like it's six and a half inches, so we're going to three and a quarter and shear it. Um, if you use a paper cutter for shearing board stock, do not expect to use it for precise paperwork ever again. Circuit board material is extremely rough on cutting, cutting surfaces. So the next step, and this is an important step, is making sure that your boards are, are very clean. So as you see, when initially, if I run water on here, it repels the water and has a coating on it. Mm -hmm. It's shiny, and copper by itself isn't typically very shiny. So I'm taking some scouring powder, doesn't matter what you use, and a Scotch-Brite um, sponge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scour that coating off here, and, and you'll see a dark material coming off the board. What I like to do is I like to go in one direction for a while, and then just ensure that I can see the the scratches on the board. Let's take a look here. And the goal here is to remove all of the coating from the board as well as any other oils, your fingers, anything that might get in the way of bonding the, the toner to the board. So now you see the water coats the board a little bit differently. It's not rolling off quite so fast. Um, you tend to miss the edges a little bit, which is one of the reasons why I have that extra toner around the edges. So what I like to do after I after I hand clean the boards is to use denatured alcohol just to make sure that any other oils or coatings or whatever um, are off. So what we're going to do here is we have the mirrored printout of the top layer. We're going to do this one first. This is more critical. It has a very tight um, accelerometer footprint there. So we're going to laminate this onto this board. What I use to stick them together is uh, laser printer labels because I know that they can handle the temperature. Laser printers, after all, are warm inside. And so I'm going to take the leading edge of this sandwich and just put a label on there. 
to hold the leading edge in. Now, it says must use carrier, don't use the carrier. What we're doing here is we're melting the plastic based toner from the laser printer. Toner is about 60% plastic and we're melting that plastic and trying to get it to stick the paper and the circuit board material together, which it seems to have done pretty well. They seem to be you all bonded by now. Okay, the next step is to actually remove the paper from this sandwich of, of paper, toner, and board. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take these, these two boards out of the laminator and we're going to stick them in some warm water. We're going to let them soak for a few minutes until the paper gets soft enough to actually remove. As you see, there's a little bit of um, kind of blistering going on there uh, in areas that weren't weren't tied down. I tried as hard as I could to make sure that most of the surface of the board was actually covered with toner. And this will help us save on on etchant and so on, um, as well as minimize the environmental impact of of dumping the used etchant down the toilet. So, so let's see if the paper's starting to get to the point where we can actually. So what I, what I find is is that you can just kind of rub it and it'll start peeling, leaving the the toner still attached. If you see flecks of toner come up with the paper that you're rolling up, you've got a problem. So what you'll find is that when you when you clean it up, especially with this brochure paper, um, there might be some areas that are covered with fuzz from the from the paper being held down by the toner, um, and especially in areas where you have a tight clearance, a tight piece of copper, you may need a little bit of extra attention. So what 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 I find myself doing on this is I take a very soft toothbrush, and of course this being hot water, it softens the toothbrush even further. And those areas where I see a little bit of of fuzz, I just very gently use the toothbrush. Okay, so there's the the finished board with toner on it. The other side still, still we haven't done anything with. Um, at this point, now we need to mask the other surface, which we're going to do with contact paper. Because this is a two-sided board, and because we don't want to etch both sides at once, I'm not quite brave enough to do that. I'm going to take some of this self-adhesive vinyl material, contact paper, and stick it on the back sides, the underside, if you will, of the, the boards, to just cover the part we're not etching right now. The etchant we're going to use today is made out of muriatic acid, which is 80% hydrochloric acid from Lowe's in this case. It's sold in the section where concrete cleaners are. And drugstore hydrogen peroxide, which is a 3% solution in water. And in general, there's always uh, always the rule of always adding acid to water. This is mostly water. Um, I use a 1 to 3 solution here. Um, so I'm going to put in, in this case, this is only about a third of a cup of hydrogen peroxide. Um, I might make a little bit more than usual here. So let's say two-thirds of a cup of that. And then One third as much of muriatic acid. Now I'm going to turn on the exhaust fan here because, at least until you mix it, muriatic acid can, can fume and uh, can be pretty irritating in the nose. It will burn, so keep it off your skin. I'm, I'm wearing eye protection because I tend to splash it up a lot, and rubber gloves help. So. Take it over here briefly just to rinse out. You do want to make sure that the etchant uh, and the things that make it, at least the hydrochloric acid, don't contact your nice stainless steel sink or, in fact, anything else that you don't want to etch. This stuff will etch pretty much any metal. Okay, so as you recall, we have our we have our boards. You see that it's dried and gotten kind of white. First thing that's going to happen, we put it in the etchant. 
is that white, which is the clay holding bits and pieces of the paper on, that clay is going to go away really fast. Let's watch what happens. So we see that, that fizzing. That's the clay. And as you see, it cleans, it basically cleans the top off. It takes, in my experience, it takes about five minutes with new etchant. I didn't heat this etchant. Sometimes I put it in the microwave for about a minute and heat it up a bit. Um, the chemical reaction will, of course, go faster if it's hot. The etchant, I don't know if you get this on the camera, the etchant's turning a very light shade of blue. So you see it against the, against the white, white towel there. Um, and the blue is from the dissolved copper ions. So when you think you're done, if you let it go too long, you run the risk of, of uh, undercutting, of, of etching through traces that you want to keep. What I'm doing here is I, I just pulled it out using the tongs. I like to flow water whenever I have this stuff anywhere near my sink because it will etch the nice shiny stainless steel surface. So I used the tongs, ran it under the water, and uh, pulled it out so I can take a look at how the traces look. Now I'm going to just rinse the etching off here and set it aside. And, um, then I'm going to take it over to the microscope and take a look at it. But it, it looks like it's etched pretty well. Okay. Okay. What I'm going to do is I've got four mounting holes, and I'm going to drill, drill just a pilot hole in them right now. It's going to help me line up my artwork for the other side. We're doing the second side now, and the crucial thing here is going to be to line all of these holes up with holes on the other side. Mm. So what I've done is I've drilled through the four mounting holes. I've drilled small holes and I'm going to line those up with corresponding holes in the artwork on the second side. And so what I did is I took straight pins, shoved them through from the black side where I could see where the holes were, and made a pinhole, and now I'm shoving those through the corresponding holes here mm -hmm. in the board. The last step of the process is going to be taking the toner off. We've, we've etched both sides, and um, probably the best stuff to do this with is acetone, which just wipes this particular toner off. You might find that your toner isn't soluble in acetone, but something like Goof Off or some other paint remover. Okay, so there's our, our copper layer on that side. And on this side, same thing. Um, I'm using this stuff here called Cool Amp. It's a powder. You can get a, um, a small tin of, uh, and what it does is it silver plates the exposed copper. And the reason we want to do that is because copper will rapidly um, corrode and become unsolderable. So, just to make things easier on us at soldering time, So, you don't have to have a microscope to do this. It helps if you have one. Having some magnification helps anyway. So I'm checking for, checking to make sure that my traces haven't been etched through and that I haven't got bridging where I don't want them. So here's the, the, the board. We are with the LEDs flowing through the pattern we expect. The bottom LED flashes through red, green, blue, the middle one through green, blue, and the top one through red, green, blue. Uh, this is running the Olimax board, uh, connected to the discovery board just used as a programmer, and uh, that's the LEDs. See the buttons there? And if I turn up the volume on the amplifier, you should be able to hear the metronome sound. Just a regular beat, and then if I press the middle button, which is the only one that works right now, I should hear the sound of a train whistle. And that's where I've gotten so far. 